Queen Elizabeth II, the mother of Prince Charles, heir to the throne, as well as the grandmother of Princess William and Harry, was crowned on June 2, 1953. As the longest reigning queen in British history, Elizabeth has attempted to make her reign more modern and sensitive to a changing public while upholding crown traditions. The queen is a well-loved and revered figure all across the world. During her exceptional reign, she traveled more than any other monarch, making several significant overseas visits. She has been a major figurehead for the UK and the Commonwealth during times of enormous social change, and she is known for her sense of duty and devotion to a life of service. Hi guys, welcome back to Celebrity Life Story Channel. Today, I will uncover the life biography of the longest-serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. I'll talk about her life as a queen, interesting facts, and much more. If you want to learn more about her life, keep watching till the end. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. So, let's get started. Queen Elizabeth II was born on April 21, 1926 in London to Prince Albert, Duke of York, also known as King George VI and Elizabeth Beausleon. Elizabeth's father and mother split their time between London and Royal Lodge, the family's house in Windsor Great Park. Tutors educated Elizabeth and her younger sister Margaret at home. French, math, and history were taught in school, and dancing, singing, and arts were also taught. When the World War II broke out in 1939, Elizabeth and her sister were relocated to Windsor Castle and generally kept out of London. In 1940, she delivered the first of her renowned radio broadcasts consoling the children of Britain who had been evacuated from their homes and families. The 14-year-old princess, showing her calm and firm personality, told them that in the end, all will be well, for God will care for us and give us victory and peace. Elizabeth soon began to take on additional public responsibilities. Elizabeth made her first public appearance reviewing troops in 1942, when her father appointed her Colonel-in-Chief of the Grenadier Guards. She also began accompanying her parents on formal visits within the United Kingdom. She joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service in 1945 to aid with the war effort. She trained side by side with other British women to be expert drivers and mechanics. In fact, in 2003, she has used that military grade driving skills to haze the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Women were not yet permitted to drive in Saudi Arabia, and Prince Abdullah was unaccustomed to being driven by a woman, let alone a queen. So he literally begged the queen to slow down and concentrate on the road ahead through his interpreter. Getting back to her military life, while her voluntary job was just a few months long, it provided Elizabeth with a glimpse into a different, non-royal world. Outside of the royal family, she had another exciting moment when she and Margaret were allowed to mix with ordinary people on victory in Europe Day without being recognized. Accession to the Throne When Elizabeth's grandfather, George V, died in 1936, his eldest son, Elizabeth's uncle, ascended to the throne. Edward, on the other hand, was madly in love with American divorcee, Wallace Simpson, and had to choose between the throne and his heart. Finally, Edward selected Simpson and abdicated the throne. That event altered the direction of her life, making her the presumed heir to the British throne. In 1937, her father was appointed King George VI using the name George to symbolize continuity with his father. When King George died in 1952, his mother became Queen Elizabeth, and her daughter became Queen Elizabeth II. Coronation At the age of 25, Elizabeth was crowned Queen Elizabeth II on June 2, 1953, in Westminster Abbey. When her father, King George VI died on February 6, 1952. Elizabeth took over as the reigning monarch. For the first time, the coronation ceremony was aired live on television. 
allowing people all around the world to watch the pomp and grandeur. Her husband, Prince Philip. On November 20, 1947, Elizabeth married her distant cousin, Philip Mountbatten, at Westminster Abbey in London. When Elizabeth was 13, she met Philip, the son of Prince Andrew of Greece. She was instantly taken with him. They remained in contact over the years and eventually fell in love. They made an interesting couple. Elizabeth was reserved and quiet, but Philip was exuberant and outspoken. Her father, King George VI, was concerned about the marriage because Mountbatten had ties to both the Danish and Greek royal houses. He was not wealthy and was thought to have a gruff disposition by others. At the time of their wedding, the United Kingdom was still reeling from the devastation of World War II, and Elizabeth even used clothing coupons to purchase fabric for her gown. Queen Elizabeth II's Children Elizabeth and Philip didn't waste any time in having a child. Their first son Charles was born the year after their wedding, in 1948, and daughter Anne was born in 1950. Elizabeth gave birth to two more boys, Andrew and Edward, in 1960 and 1964 respectively. In 1969, the Queen formally designated Charles as her heir by bestowing the title of Prince of Wales on him. Hundreds of millions of people watched the ceremony live on television. Charles, 32, married Diana Spencer, better known as Princess Diana in 1981, despite accusations that he was forced into the marriage by his family. The wedding drew huge crowds in London streets, and millions watched the ceremonies on television. At the time, public opinion was very favorable to the monarchy. When it comes to the Queen's hobbies, the Queen has spent much of her life surrounded by dogs. She is known for her love of corgis. From the time she was a teenager and got her first corgi, to the time she lost her last one, Willow, in 2018, overall, she had more than 30 corgis. Elizabeth is also a horse person who has been breeding thoroughbreds and going to races for a long time. Queen Elizabeth prefers peaceful pleasures and avoids the limelight. She apparently enjoys reading mysteries, doing crossword puzzles, and even watching wrestling on television. A Modern Monarchy During the first decade of the 21st century, the Queen's and the royal family's popularity recovered. Though Queen Elizabeth celebrated her Golden Jubilee 50 years on the throne, early that year, the deaths of her mother and sister dampened the festivities. In 2005, when the Queen gave her blessing to Prince Charles' long-awaited wedding to Camilla Parker Bowles, she got a lot of support from the public. In her seventh decade as Queen, Elizabeth presided over another royal wedding in Westminster Abbey, that of Prince William and Catherine Middleton in April 2011. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who will most likely become Britain's next king and queen, have continued the line of succession with their children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Prince Philip, a constant presence by his wife's side and one of Britain's busiest royals for much of her reign, retired from royal duties in 2017 at the age of 96. That same year, the royal couple celebrated 70 years of marriage, making their partnership the longest in British history. Philip passed away in 2021 at the age of 99. In May 2018, Prince Harry married multiracial divorcee Meghan Markle, whose embrace by the royal family demonstrated how modern the monarchy had become over Elizabeth's lengthy reign. Archie Mountbatten-Windsor was born in 2019, and Lilibet Diana Mountbatten-Windsor was born in 2021. At the center of it all is the Queen herself, who turned 90 in 2016 and shows no signs of slowing down. She keeps up her formal obligations, public appearances, and spends a lot of time outside with her dogs and horses. At different times, there have been rumors that Queen Elizabeth will step down and give the throne to Prince Charles. 
For example, in 2017, she gave some of her royal duties, like the official Remembrance Day ceremony, to her eldest son, which led to rumors that she was getting ready to give up the throne. However, many royal experts don't think she will ever step down, and she remains a consistent stable leader of Britain's ruling family. That's it for today, people! I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to click the bell button to receive daily updates and more wonderful videos like this. Take care for the time being, and I'll see you in the next video, which will have another celebrity life story.